Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I'm going to start a new series of videos uh, focused on what I'm going to call the basics of DCC because I've been getting a lot of what I consider very basic questions. People asking me what goes into a DCC system, uh, what about beginner sets and that kind of thing, did the various manufacturers offer those, how do all these components fit together, how do you wire them up, how do you wire everything to the layout, a whole plethora of different types of questions like that. So what I've done is I've put together a list of about 14 different topics for videos. And so we're going to start today by taking a look at different types of systems, and I'm not going to show you every possible manufacturer. So I've got NCE and I've got Digitrux equipment. That's what I'm going to be focusing on. If you're interested in something else, go to their website and take a look there because that's where you'll be able to find out what different manufacturers offer. And I just don't have the resources to buy one of everything that everybody makes. It's, it, it's just too much. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, let me ask you one thing. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, let me point out that in the past I have done videos on a number of topics like this one. And I will go ahead and list a couple of these at the end of the video on the, the end page. I would also recommend that you scan through the list of videos. I know there's over 300 of them now here on the DCC Guide channel, but take a minute, just scan down through because I've done videos on how to install various of these, the power cab in particular, and use it on a model railroad. I've done videos on how to use additional throttles with them. So please take the time to go back and look through some of these previous videos that I've already done on similar topics. I've zoomed in here so we can take a look at, at a couple of different systems one from NCE and one from Digitrux. Now, one thing I want to point out as far as uh, a couple of tips on selecting a DCC system for you. The best thing I can suggest to you is find individuals in your area that have model railroads or a local club. Find out what DCC system they use. In the US, it's probably going to be either a North Coast Engineering or an NCE system or it's going to be a Digitrack system. Those are the most popular ones here in the US. And visit what those people uh, or, those, or those clubs and get a hands-on feel for the equipment that they are using. Decide whether or not you like this kind of throttle or one of the other types that are being used. Another thing to consider when you're uh, looking at DCC systems is the upward compatibility of things like the basic throttles. If your needs change over time and you need more power or need to be able to run more locomotives, things like that, then are you going to be able to use the introductory system that you buy and move up and use the components with an intermediate system or a more advanced system? And that's something that I will talk about today. It's true of both the NCE and the Digitrack systems. I believe MRC also offers uh, some upward compatibility, but that's one thing to always keep in mind. If you need to move up and get more power, more, more uh, abilities, will the introductory system that you initially buy be able to do that? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the NCE power cab system. Now this is a very popular DCC system, both in the United States and the UK. I assume it's fairly popular in Europe too. And it offers a lot of capabilities, and I went through all of those in my video on upgrading the power cab to the SB5, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, the neat thing about this is it is very easy to use. It has a lot of capabilities. If you decide to move up to a more advanced system and go to the top of the line NCE system, then this can be used as just a throttle. Now, let me point out that there are three basic components to every DCC system. There is a throttle, 
that acts as your interface. There is a command station which generates the DCC commands to control your decoders and your locomotives. And then there is a booster. And the booster takes that basic DCC command generated by the command station and literally boosts it up to whatever track power you've either pre-selected or that the uh, system supports. So those are the three basic components. And I'm not gonna get into the details of each today. I'll be handling those in future videos. We will take a look at throttles. We will take a look at command stations. We will take a look at boosters. So hold your questions on those or go back through the videos that are already on the channel and take a look at what I have previously posted there about throttles, command stations, and boosters, because I have covered those in the past. So this is your basic power cab system. It comes with the booster and the command station built right into this handheld unit. Therefore, you're gonna find it's not very powerful. Uh, the current one, I believe, comes with about a 1.8 amp or so power supply, and that means you're gonna be able to run maybe four or five HO scale locomotives at slow speeds, or you're going to be probably doubling that with in scale. So you can use this system for a lot of your typical home layouts, for modular layouts, those kinds of things uh, that are where you're not going to be running a lot of different locomotives. So let's look at what else comes with this. So you also have this coily cable here, and this is a six pin connector on that. And you must use the six pin cable that comes with this uh, when it's being used as a power cap because Two of those wires are used for transmitting power to the layout. So you have to use the six pin cable. The next thing is this interface here. And it has components on it that are specific to the NCE power cap. So you'll see right here we have a barrel plug and that's where you plug in the power uh, supply to it. This is where you connect your track leads. And it basically, it comes out, so it makes it convenient to fiddle with it and make the connections. It's a screw terminal adapter. You stick your two wires in here, tighten up the screw terminals, and then plug it in here to this guy, and you're ready to go as soon as you power, uh, power up with the power supply and connect your handheld throttle to it. Now, with this, it's always gotta be plugged in to the left port here on the system. And once everything's powered up and ready to go, this little red light is gonna light up. It's got a nice little pilot light there. It also comes with a standard plug-in type power supply, just plugs into your wall in your house. Uh, in the UK, it comes with that three-prong type UK plug. So they make one just for you guys over there. This particular one that I have is rated at 1.44 amps. Uh, the one that I saw recently uh, for the UK is, is rated at 1.8 amps. So take that into consideration. A typical HO scale locomotive will nowadays max out at around half an amp. But that's running at full, full speed, pulling a load. Under normal conditions, you're talking maybe a quarter of an amp, tenth of an amp, something like that, if you're just running it at very slow switching or shunting speeds. So you can usually operate a nice sized little model railroad using this device here. Okay, so then you would simply plug this in here, attach your track feed here, and power it up and you're ready to go. A lot of people find that it is very easy to use. It has a very nice menu driven system for a lot of the functions. It's got a horn and a whistle and a bell dedicated button here, one for the headlight, and then for individual functions, you can just push the individual numbers uh, on the keypads to select that function. So it's very easy to use. Okay, what happens then when you find that you need more than 1.4 or 1.8 amps on your model railroad? What are the options available to you? Now, once you decide it's time to move up, you need a little more power, the option that you have available to you next in line with the NCE system is their Smart Booster SB4. 
five. NSB means smart booster. Five means it's a five amp system. So you would be going from about 1.4 or 1.8 amps up to five amps. And that's enough to operate most mid-size to even large model railroads, depending on how many trains you're going to be operating simultaneously. Now, it comes with a power supply, and as you can see here, it is selectable. You can go with 13.8 volts on the track or 12 volts on the track. So you simply slide that switch one way or the other to choose which voltage you want to use. And that's mainly a, a choice between uh, HO00 scale and in scale or Z scale. Okay, so once you've selected the track voltage you want to go with, uh, it comes with a standard wall uh, plug and similarly one for the UK. And they do sell these in the UK. And it has a barrel plug attachment on this end. And that simply plugs into here on the front where it says power. So that immediately gives you power. Now when it comes to adding uh, track connections, it's the same black connector that I showed you previously. It just plugs in right here next to the power and your wires are connected, goes to your model railroad. So that's all there is to that. Your cab bus would be connected here and we'll talk about wiring later on uh, in a future video. So I'm not going to delve into this except for the fact that both this and the power cab do support additional plug-in ports on your model railroad. So you can have true walk around control on your layout. Now one thing I forgot to mention is when you're using the power cab with its uh, plug-in panel here, it must be plugged in all the time to this unit because it provides power to the layout. The booster is located in here. So any time that you're using your model railroad, this has to be plugged in to this panel. Now, that is not true when it comes to the SB5. With the SB5, the booster is built in here because it's a smart booster. It has a certain amount of capabilities as well, but the main thing is you're gonna get those five amps. This simply gets plugged into the cab bus, and in this case, you can use that four wire cable that also comes with the power cab system initially. And when you're using this with the Smart Booster 5 or with the powerhouse larger system that, uh, that NCE sells, under those conditions, this just acts as a throttle. It's not acting as the command station and the booster itself. That is being handled by this guy here, the SB5. So that gives you the ability to unplug it, walk to the next control panel, plug this in, and you're ready to go. Now, I mentioned the expansion panels. They look just like the main panel here that you use with the power cab. And you can attach and daisy chain these on a model railroad so that you can just plug in your throttle, control your train, move to the next position, plug in again, and follow your train around your model railroad. Makes it very efficient as far as walk around operation. Now one thing, in addition to sitting down and going through all of the steps for an introduction to your DCC system, I know for a fact that people tend to get frustrated with push buttons and new systems. And invariably, when things don't work the way they expect them to or want them to work or are different from what the manufacturer designed them to do, then they will often get frustrated and just start pushing buttons willy-nilly to find out what happens. Let me warn you, that is not a good thing to do. If you do that though, please turn the power off, unplug it, walk away, come back in about 10, 15 minutes or so, sit down and do it the way they suggest instead of the way you think it should be done. And I think you'll find out that it will work once you've got a clear head and are doing it exactly the way they tell you to. Okay, what about moving up then next in line with the NCE system? Well, I don't have one of their powerhouse full-blown systems. Unfortunately, I've never gotten one of those. It's another step up. And if you're interested in what they offer on that, I suggest you go to their website and look up, and it's NCE 
DCC.com, take a look at the powerhouse specifications, and they will tell you what it can do. You can probably download a copy of the manual there and get a feeling for it. Now, I will tell you that the throttle will be compatible with a standard powerhouse system, so you'll still be able to use the throttle as a throttle, just like you were with the SB5. Okay, let's turn and take a look at the other popular system here in the US, the Digitrex system. Now the introductory system from Digitrex is what they call their Zephyr. Now this is an old one, the DCS50. The newer version has a much larger screen. It's much, much different in that respect, but it looks pretty much like this. And it will come with a power supply. This is the one that I got with this one. It was rated at 3 amps, 15 volts. It does a very good job, and as you can see, it comes with a throttle built in, a braking action forward and reverse, and the typical type of keyboard for selecting locomotives and doing various other functions. Now, what happens though when you want to upgrade the system a little bit and be able to have a walk around throttle? You can purchase a much larger throttle like this. This is their DT602 throttle. It's compatible with this. You simply plug in here to the back and you're ready to go. Now when it comes to expansion, they have these uh, individual universal panels, the UP5. Uh, I think they're up to the UP6 now, so there's a little bit more up-to-date version of this. And it comes with a couple of sockets in the, on the front that you can plug your throttles into. And it has these various connectors here on the back. So you can daisy chain these, connect them to the LocoNet connection here on the back. It's like an Ethernet type system for connecting all of these together. So you can have these strung all around your layout. They fit nicely on the uh, fascia of a layout, look real nice. And you can walk around carrying your th handheld throttle with you, plugging and unplugging as you follow your train. So it's very simple. You just plug your throttle into it like that, and you're ready to operate. Unplug and move to the next one. So these are available separately from Digitrex. These have a large number of capabilities. If you're interested in a Digitrex Zephyr, suggest you go to the digitrex.com website, look up Zephyr and see all of the different capabilities that it offers and compare that to the power cap and its capabilities when you're making your decision. Okay, what happens when you're ready to move up to the next level with Digitrex? Well, let me show you. Now the next step up for Digitrex is their evolution system. And it really is a major step because you're going up to a very, very advanced level with this. You go from really a beginner introductory system, uh, the Zephyr, to something like this, which is much, much more advanced. And it has a lot more capabilities. Now they offer this as a starter set and it comes with the command station booster combination that gives you either a choice of five, a five amps or eight amps of power. Uh, it gives you a throttle, the DT602 throttle. It gives you a power supply, and it gives you one of the UP5 panels to go on the fascia of your layout, and that's used to create a, uh, a walk-around network on your layout. So basically, you might have five or six of these installed on the fascia of a mid-size layout, allowing you to unplug your throttle and move from one location to the other as your train progresses around your layout. Now this particular unit here they, has been replaced with the 210 Plus that has a USB port here on the front. Now the great thing about these is they can be operated with either a 5 amp or an 8 amp uh, power supply. And they sell, you know, they sell both. So you need to take a look there. They will come with the 5 amp power supply though. So that plugs in here. There's a barrel uh, plug connector here for the 5 amp power supply. If you're using 8 amps, you would connect it right here. So you can see right here it says 8 amps plus minus. Now that's one of the things I'll point out. 
all of the DCC systems these days being made uh, typically operate using a DC power supply. They no longer use an AC power supply. Uh, the reason for that, I've been told, is primarily because of efficiency concerns that the new switching power supplies and DC power supplies are just that much more efficient. So that's what they're using instead of an AC. But what you have then here is they've got three ports here on the front for your various connections to throttles and also to your loco net. You would use those and your universal panels to create a network around your layout where people can plug in their throttles and you could actually plug in an additional throttle here. And you have this nice removable plug-in type of terminal strip with screws here so that you can just put your wires in and tighten them in place using the screw heads here on the top. Makes it very quick and easy to make your connections. And they are labeled here on the bottom. So you have track A and track B. You've got connections for a programming track all types of different things available here. One thing that I've always liked about the Digitrack system is the ability to select track voltage. So here in the center, it would be in scale, and that's about 12 volts. And if you put the uh, toggle all the way down, it's set for HO scale, which would be perfect for double O as well, probably for S. All the way up, it's set for O and G. So for HO, you're probably de dealing with, you know, 14 volts or so, something in that range. Up in the O scale, you're probably uh, somewhere in the 16 to 18 volt range. And then on this side, they have the same type of toggle uh, for, for different modes. So there's run mode, op mode, and sleep. So you could put it to sleep and turn it off and walk away. You can put it in op mode to change various functions and settings in the uh, command station and up for run. Now, the, the uh, thing about these command stations is the command station is built in here. They also have a booster built in. And then there's a whole array of various lights up here that show you the power, programming, network, and track status. So just all of these lights to tell you what's going on with the system. And then you can plug in additional boosters, and we'll go over how to make those connections, the wiring connections and everything at a later date in another video. Now, the next level up for Digitrax is simply to go up to the next system, and that would be the DCS-240. Now, the main difference between the DCS-210 and 240 these days is simply the number of slots that it has available. The DCS-240 adds an additional 200 on top of that. So for a very large club, a very large model railroad, you might want to go up to the 240. For most people, the DCS-210 is going to be more than enough. And then if you need more power, you can just add additional boosters. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that answered your basic questions about different types of DCC systems available at the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. And also, think about those tips that I gave you of what to look for when you're going about picking the right DCC system for you. So, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.